Well, good morning and welcome to this week's Market Carver. I hope you've had an outstanding week. I will tell you what, if uh, our allocation meetings that we have on Monday where you have the whole team together, usually 45 to 50 minutes long, uh, this one went about an hour and 10. And truthfully, if I would able, if, if we had the time, I would give you an hour's worth of content. There is just a lot to discuss that's going on in the United States and global economy right now. And some of it, as Alan Greenspan would have said, or I guess it was actually Bernanke, said, ladies and gentlemen, we have a conundrum. Uh, there is some of the evidence that's just not pointing in the direction that you would expect it to go. So lots to talk about. There's the summary. I'm just going to go ahead and hit it. Let's first start here. When you look at the recoveries of the economies in terms of where we are, it is very, very clear the U.S. economy is recovering quicker or in better shape than what we're seeing in the European world. Uh, it's just the way that it is in terms of the economic numbers that are getting back up. All things are not equal. Now, we can come up with all sorts of rationale and, and explanations in terms of why this is the case, but it just is what it is. Our job is not to manage what we think ought to happen. It's to manage your nest egg, our nest egg, to make sure that we're putting our money in the right place. Right now, Europe is really on track in terms of where they're going. If you recall, we talked about this, I believe, last week, um, but you still have small caps that are showing a better valuation uh, than the large caps in the United States, but it really is the, the developed world um, large caps that are really doing well. Now, here's the conundrum, and I'm not going to walk you through this chart. For those of you who want to go back and look at it, you can. I'm going to show you about three charts on the labor market, and, and here is the synopsis of it all, uh, and this is where that conundrum really comes from. We are seeing places where the unemployment rate or people not being able to find workers has been believed to be based on unemployed benefits, the, the extra money that we've put into people's checks. The problem is when you break down all of these three charts, you look at the research that's coming out, it's just not, that's just not the case. It's not what's happening. Um, why people aren't able to find workers, I don't know. Uh, I, can, I can give you my opinion, and my opinion was based on the fact that we were paying people to stay at home. Uh, I had one of, our, one of our female people point out, you know, hey, it's hard when you don't know where they're going to shut daycare down and, and then they tell you've got to go back to work or you can't go back to work. I, you know, all of that makes sense. But the numbers are really, really odd when you look at them in, a, in, in terms of totality and term, in where we are and what to expect going forward. There is clearly a shortage of quality help that's out there. Now, I'm happy to tell you that we actually hired three people last week. Uh, they're still there. You just got to work hard to be able to find them. And we welcome those to the team, and we will uh, make those announcements soon to come in terms of who they are. Drawdowns, as you know, is once you've reached the market top, how much the market actually pulls down. And what you're seeing on this chart is that trend, the bottom two, even though the market is going higher, we have more and more companies that are more than 20% from their peak. Um, this is not really what you want to see. And if Andrew were here to explain this to you, he would go, this is not a good sign. He, he went back in his history uh, to try to find a period of time where this is a good indicator. It's really not. We expect volatility to continue to pick up. We'll get to that in a minute. Here's been the theme for 2021. It's test and hold, test and hold, test and hold. Right? And so now we've had a little bit of fail test and hold. And when we talk about that, you see that blue line that's going up. If you will, that is a moving average that's there. And just think about it being support. And then that top line that you can see that Andrew's drawn in there is what we would call resistance. So there's some mysterious force when it reaches the resistance that drives it back down. And there's some magical support that holds it up when it reaches those bottoms. And so what you've seen is that market continue to move in the right direction. Every time it pulls back, we tend to have somebody who comes in and buys. And, and that's just where we've been. But it's getting weaker and weaker as we look at it. You can see the charts with the number of companies above their 50-day moving average, the number of companies that are down more than 10%, um, not going in the right direction. Sector breadth is also not there. We talked about this before. Uh, I think a week ago, maybe Adam covered it. You're still seeing the defensive stocks actually outperform the cyclical stocks. That is not a good sign for a market. Defensive are the companies that, if you think about it, it's the sectors 
where you really have to own or you have to participate in purchasing them, right? Doesn't matter, doesn't matter if you're in COVID or not, right? You have to have toilet paper, you have to have utilities. Um, and we're seeing the strength more in those defensive sectors than in other areas. Here's the emerging markets that I mentioned a minute ago. Um, they're having a hard time moving up. So if you remember, we talked about commodities three or four, well, probably three months ago now. Lumber was up 300% year over year. That's almost all gone. Uh, a lot of those commodity prices are really pulling back. So you've got emerging, market com emerging markets. They tend to tell you where commodity prices will be. Um, part of it is they're so, they're so driven by the commodity world. Uh, but if you look and see where we are in the, in the correlation between those two, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty incredible. But that the emerging markets have really started to pull back. We really believe, as we talked about with the first chart, um, we're going to have some opportunities in foreign countries. It's just not there yet. And this is one of those things that you really have to pay attention to when you're looking at 401k assets and everything else. The idea of have, having diversification makes all the sense in the world. Having diversification in areas that are just getting ran over by a choo-choo train, that's a whole other story. And right now, that's what's happened. Commodities are pulling back. The biggest discussion we'll probably have at the thirdly, uh, the one that I'll write about in the next statement letter, is still that battle back and forth over inflation and whether or not it really exists. This chart would tend to tell you that it's starting to go the other direction. Uh, there's an awful lot of people, when you poll them, uh, and I'm not a big fan of the polls, but when, you, when people are surveyed and asked, there are an awful lot of people trying to protect themselves from inflationary pressure. Hey, if you want to know more, don't forget you can catch our radio program Saturday morning, 6 to 7 on w, um, WIBC. Anywhere you want to listen to a uh, podcast, we're there. And as Amanda would tell you, she's happy to let you know, we are back in Anderson on WHBU Radio 103.7 FM. Folks, have a great week. If there's anything at all we can do to be a service, please don't hesitate to let us know. Take care. We'll talk to you soon. Mm -hmm.